So, Miss Gray, convince me. Why should I employ a young girl when I've been recommended the services of a rather burly ex-policeman? No reason, really, except that Mr. Pride thought quite well of me. He seemed to think I had potential. He committed suicide, I understand. Yes, last week. My son committed suicide 18 days ago. I want someone to find out why. Could you do that? Didn't the inquest come up with anything? My son is dead. A fortnight ago, he was alive and apparently well. And for no reason that I can understand, he hanged himself with his own belt strap. I'm so sorry. Uh, what did the inquest say? Took his life while the balance of his mind was disturbed. Predictable explanation. I don't believe it. He was a rational person. He was reading English at Cambridge, at my old college. He had a reason for his action. Rational people do sometimes take their own lives. Why not leave it alone? Mark's dead. Nothing's going to bring him back now. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Don't worry, Miss Gray. I'm not a sentimentalist. Mark and I were not close. My fault. I'm not proud of it. But my work here absorbs me entirely. Another reason I need a detective. The real reason. My work here is hugely important, but it doesn't begin to pay for itself. A charity offered me a considerable sum of money. I heard recently that the good Christian lady who founded it was worried that Mark's suicide might be as a result of family problems. If she believes this, she won't give us the money. If we don't get the money, we won't survive six months. I need details from those who knew Mark about his state of mind before he died. Any information will help. And the job is yours, Miss Gray, if you want it. Oh. Th thank you. Right, um... Could I ask you some questions? Uh... What was his name? Mark Callender. And how old was he when he died? 23. He'd taken two years off before his degree. He was in his final year. But he never finished it? Five weeks ago, he threw the whole thing up and took a job as a gardener for a Mr Markland, just outside Duxford, about ten miles from here. He lived alone in a summer house in the grounds, apparently. That's where he hanged himself. And what about relationships? Affairs? <laughs> I've no idea. Hardly the sort of thing a young man would discuss with his father, surely. But if he did have any, I'd expect them to be heterosexual. And did he leave a suicide note? A note, but not an explanation. It was found next to the laptop Dr Callender gave him for Christmas. What did it say? And it is great to do that thing that ends all other deeds, which shackles accidents and bolts up change, which sleeps and never pallets more the dug. Anthony and Cleopatra. Did you study English too? Oh, not at university, I'm afraid. I, I never had time. Why didn't you make the time? <sighs> My father didn't want me to. He wanted me to be with him. I lived with him in Italy for five years until he died. Well, it sounds as if you managed to be closer than Mark and I ever were. Oh, I doubt it. I hardly saw him until he got ill. He was a travel writer, always rushing off. Could I possibly see Mark's room? And a photograph? Please. I'm sure I can find one. He didn't have any financial worries, then? I gave him an allowance when he was at college. I assume he lived off his own earnings for the last couple of weeks. You mean he cancelled his allowance? He made his career choice. Stupidly, in my view, but it was up to him. Of course, he did have the security of knowing he was going to inherit a large fortune from his maternal grandfather in two years' time. And what will happen to the money now? 
No, it shall be shared amongst a long list of highly respectable charities, none of which will benefit me or my work in the slightest. Unfortunately. My wife's father told me it's stuck in his throat that I might just possibly inherit her money one day, but he'd certainly make sure I didn't benefit from Mark's inheritance. And did you inherit her money? Yes, sadly. She died when Mark was very young. Just a baby. You've had it tidied up? No, this is how he liked it. Not that he spent much time here. I packed him off to boarding school as soon as they'd take him. Seemed the best thing, considering. I've got the photo, Miss Gray. I took it last summer. It's rather good, I think. Yes. Well, goodbye, Miss Gray. I really must get back to work. Will you please deal with Miss Leeming from now on? Sorry, you can't see him. Miss Gray, Miss Gray, Miss Gray, no! I tried to stop her. It's marvelous how the young always think their needs must come first. We shan't be long, Elizabeth. So, why this dramatic appearance at such a ridiculous hour? If it's to report that Lunn is dead, the police have already told me. Or have your investigations turned up something pertinent at last? What did you expect me to discover? Something more than childish fantasy. Clearly, you've achieved nothing. I made a mistake with you. But thank you for your time and effort. I thought you wanted to know what I'd discovered. What? More bizarre fantasies about Mark being murdered. He was murdered. He was murdered by someone he knew so well that he didn't hesitate to let them into the summer house. And then he was strangled. Or suffocated. And strung up by his own belt. The murderer put lipstick on him, dressed him in women's underclothes, and spread naked pictures over the table. So it had looked like he'd strangled himself accidentally during a sexual experiment. It's quite common, I believe. What are you talking about? Women's underclothes. He wasn't found like that. Of course he wasn't. But that's why you employed me, isn't it? The real reason, I mean. Because you wanted to know why he hadn't been found in just the way you'd left him. You were desperate to know what happened to him after you killed him, weren't you? Must be that much-admired scientific curiosity of yours. I employed you as a rather shameful but necessary public relations exercise to satisfy my backers. All right. Let's indulge your hypothesis for a moment. What happened next? After this obscene murder? Someone came to the summer house and found Mark. They were so shocked that they went for help so that they could at least make him look decent. But when they came back, they found that someone else had done the job for them. Who were all these people? I'm not at liberty to tell you. You don't really know much, do you, Miss Gray? Certainly not enough to convict whoever might have done this terrible thing to Mark. Not even enough to have them committed for trial, I should say. All you've done is antagonize me and a number of others with your extraordinary notions. 
I also know why you killed him. At first I thought it was because Mark had discovered that you weren't his father, but that didn't make any sense. He'd found out that your wife wasn't his mother, hadn't he? And that terrified you. Why should that affect me one way or the other? Oh, of course it terrified you. You were petrified that Mark would make it all public. And then what would that nice Christian lady from the Wolvington Trust say? Fraud, illegitimacy, and a father who'd lied to his son all his life about who his real mother was. Well, you'd have had to kiss goodbye to that money that she'd promised you. And then what would happen to your precious laboratory? The only thing that you've ever really cared about in your life. I was at a college dinner on the night that Mark died, as numerous people will confirm. You killed Mark before the dinner. You got Lund to ring you during the meal and pretend to be Mark wanting to talk to you. That's your alibi. But then you discovered that somebody had found Mark's body during the evening. So you had to tell Benskin the truth, that it was really Lund and not your son who rang. Don't you find it distasteful to talk like that about a man who's just died? He was my right hand. Quite brilliant in his way. And without him, you don't have a shred of evidence. Merely slanderous allegations. And if you repeat a word of them outside this room, I'll destroy any reputation you might have and bankrupt your sorry little business. How can you talk so calmly? Mark was your son. He was your son. You really no conception of the importance of the work we do here. Mark's death was necessary. Unlike most deaths, it served a purpose. It was for the public good. For the good of humanity, if you like. He should have been proud to die in such a cause. You didn't think to ask him first. It's not as if he was... How shall I put it? He wasn't a very valuable individual. In fact, he was a self-righteous prig. Who would seriously mourn his loss for more than five minutes? Isn't that what one has to ask? I'm afraid I didn't love him. Yes, I can see from the conventional look of shock on your face that you think I should have. What can I say? I'm a scientist, I report what I find, and I find that I didn't love him. Not at all. And if his own father didn't love him, who else would? Oh, my... Son, wasn't he? His son and mine. I've only ever loved two people. Both of them are now dead. I found this in his dress suit, the one he wore to the college dinner the night Mark died. It was your lipstick. And you wiped it off Mark when you found him. Change him into decent clothes, yes. Try to give him back some dignity. What are you doing? Phoning the police. Why? Why not? What does it matter now? Losing your freedom matters. Going to prison matters. Do you think Mark would have wanted his mother sent to prison? Do you, do you want the whole world knowing how horribly your son died and who killed him? Oh. Tell me what I have to do. Is there, is there anyone else in the house? No. Right then, we we have to act quickly, and and we have to trust each other. What are you doing? I, I, I think there's a firing residue, and I think the police can test for it. Now, wash your hands and uh, and get me a, a thin pair of gloves. <laughs> Do as I say, quickly!
I've wiped off your fingerprints, but they'll expect to find mine on it. Did Mark ask you to come and see him the day he died? I told him I'd come round when I could. Perhaps he was going to tell you that he knew you were his mother. You better put these back where you found them and the lipstick. <clears throat> then what? Then we work out our story and then you call the police. There's your payment. You did what Ronald asked. You said there were things I had a right to know. About you and Mark, I assume. Ronald was desperate for a son, you see. Mainly because Evelyn's father had promised her half a million if she had one. I discovered I was pregnant about the same time she learned she was never going to conceive. It was so easy. She pretended she was pregnant. I took a flat in Camden, and then every couple of months, the three of us flew to Italy, where I'd become Mrs. Callender, and she'd be me. Then, when she got back to England, she put on a bit more padding. How could she put up with anything so humiliating? Because she loved Ronald and didn't want to lose him. And, of course, she was religious. She was practising self-deception. She persuaded herself it was all best for the child. And she did get the child. For nine months. Till she died. Did he kill her? No. He wasn't always such a monster. I wouldn't have loved him if he had been. He grew worse, more frustrated as the years went by. And he had to accept that he wasn't great after all. <laughs> 